Welcome back to Anderson Acres. We're in the kitchen again today and today we're going to make something that is going to take us literally all day. So it's still early morning here. Let's get started and hope these are done by dinner. We are going to make croissants. Now if you google recipes for croissants you will come across dozens of different recipes. Some use yeast, some are just straight pastry. So there's a lot of different ways to make croissants. This is the way we make croissants here so if you do it differently, that's fine. Basically what a croissant is, is it's a very flaky dough rolled up into that classic croissant shape. And this dough turns out really flaky because there's a lot of layers, the different layers of butter and dough. So because we have to create those layers, that's why it's gonna take all day. <laughs> we have to create layers of dough, butter, dough, butter, dough, butter, and roll it out many times. So. You really, you have to really account for about eight hours at least because you refrigerate the dough in between. So do not start this if you want a bread ready in three hours. It's not going to happen. You need at least eight hours. You can let the dough sit overnight if you need to because you run out of time. That's fine. I'm not going to let it sit overnight. I'm just going to do it all today. So I'm recommending you use a bread maker. And the reason I do that is because I want you to use the bread maker to make the dough because everything else about making croissants is kind of labor intensive. So save yourself a little bit of trouble. Use the bread maker to make the dough and do the first rise. So let's start adding our ingredients. We need one cup of water, two tablespoons of milk. I'm using 2%, but you can use whatever milk you have as long as it's not skim. You can use whole milk if you like. Skim milk will make this a little bit weird. You want the milk in there to give you a softer uh, dough. We want three tablespoons of sugar. Yes, you do need that much sugar. We need only a quarter teaspoon of salt. I'm using just regular table salt, and you can use any salt you like, but you do need just a smidge of salt, too much salt, and your dough is not going to turn out. This is a dough that rises very slowly, so too much, too much salt will mean that your dough does not rise. Okay, so quarter teaspoon of salt, that's it. Then we're gonna do three tablespoons of butter. You can estimate the butter, it's not a big deal. You do wanna make sure it's butter, not margarine. This is one of those times I'm gonna tell you, use butter. You do not wanna use margarine, margarine won't work. This is a very buttery dough, you need the butter. Now we're gonna want three cups of flour, do not use whole wheat. Okay, this is a really slow rising dough and you do not want to slow it down anymore because it's already gonna take several hours to rise. So if you use a whole wheat or a rye flour, you're going to end up with a dough that just doesn't rise. Then you're gonna want two teaspoons of yeast. I am using bread machine yeast because it's going in the bread machine. If you were to make this by hand, you could use traditional yeast. I'm not using traditional yeast because I really do recommend the bread maker. Can you do it by hand or using a mixer? Sure. I'm using the bread maker just to save myself a little bit of time and effort. So I'm going to pop this in the bread maker now on the dough cycle. It'll take about an hour and a half in my bread maker for the dough to be ready. So we will come back when that's done and then I will show you how to create those classic layers that are really important to a good croissant. All right, so our dough has completed its first rise in the bread maker. At this point, you wanna squeeze all the air out of it. Okay, make sure you got all that air. Let me get that out of there. And then we want to roll this into a rectangular shape. It doesn't have to be perfect. As for how big that rectangular shape should be, uh, 15 inches by 12 inches, maybe. It doesn't matter that much. You do need it rectangular-ish, okay? You want it maybe three-eighths of an inch thick. And yes, I will put a link to the rolling pin I'm using and the mat because these are actually really helpful for making croissants. So you want to roll that out. Do use a roller. Don't just use your hands. You can use your hands to help. So you can set your roller aside and kind of use your hands to stretch. But ultimately, you do want to finish up with a roller just because you want it nice and even. 
And you may have to let your dough relax here and there as you do this. So this may take you a few minutes. You also will have a few bubbles that you should pop. Get rid of those bubbles. And then we'll just keep rolling. And remember, if you have these, this kind of rolling pin, you can take these off. So to take these off, if you want to just use it as a straight rolling pin, you just unroll the edges and you can take these off or you can change the thickness. It doesn't really matter. Since I took one side off, I might as well take the other side off. There we go. So you can use it just like this as well, or you can put these on. It depends on how comfortable you are judging the thickness. And you can hear some of the air bubbles squeak in there. There we go. And I'm gonna turn it over now, which is a good thing to do when you're working with bread dough, is turn it over at least once. So, there we go. So yeah, we just wanna give it a pull. There we go, that helps relax it. So about 12 by 15, does it have to be exact? No, don't worry about it too much. Okay, as long as you have a rectangular shape, that's roughly the same thickness all the way around and make sure you do finish with your rolling pin <clears throat> because it really does help keep everything kind of neat and it helps you squish out those air bubbles a little bit. You do want those air bubbles out so you can hear them pop. There we go. So roughly rectangular, doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so basically like that. The measurement is more for your own uh, peace of mind than an exact measurement. So if you end up 18 by 12 or 15 by 13, it's not really that big a deal. So now we need about a quarter cup of butter. You will need a total of three quarters of cups of butter, but we only need one quarter right now. So one quarter cup of butter, kind of smush that down. You can use your hand as well. So you can take your hand and push, or you can use a knife. You can really do it however you like. So we're just going to move this around a little bit. There we go. So what you wanna do is you wanna move the butter around. The butter should be spreadable. Don't worry about making the butter cold because we're gonna put this in the fridge so the butter will get cold. Okay, so just kinda evenly distribute it on two thirds of the dough. So I want it evenly distributed over here. I wanna leave this third alone. Okay, so you want butter on some of it, not butter on the rest, and you do need to use butter. It's really important that this is butter, not margarine, because margarine will not work. I promise you, margarine will not work. Okay, it simply will not, don't even bother. This needs to be butter because that is really the defining flavor of croissants, is the butter. You can taste it when you bite into a good croissant. So butter, not margarine. Okay. And again, you don't have to be perfect. Just kind of get that on there. Okay, there we go. Looks pretty good. Doesn't have to be perfect. So now what you're going to do is you're going to fold this into a bundle. So you want to take your unbuttered third. So this third has no butter on it. We're going to take that, fold that over. Okay, give it a little bit of a press. Now we're going to take our other third that has butter on it and get that. Fold that over, okay? Now we're gonna pinch our ends to seal it together. Okay, so we just want our dough pinched here. So just give us a little boop, boop, boop. Okay, so pinch your ends and they've got kind of this nice rectangle going. Okay, just make sure you don't have any air traps. If you have air, just kind of work it to the ends. You see an air bubble? Give it a pop. So there we go. Now what we want to do is we want to get a piece of plastic wrap. So I'm just using a regular old piece of plastic wrap. It doesn't have to be fancy. Okay, and we're just going to stretch that out. Mine got a little wonky. So stretch that out. Tuck it under. So basically wrap it in plastic wrap. Doesn't matter how whatever method you have for wrapping, just doesn't matter. Just wrap it up in plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out. Pick it up, put it on a cutting board, okay? 
And now we're gonna stick that in the fridge. And the reason we put it on a cutting board is to give it some stability while it's in the fridge. And you want to wrap it in plastic wrap so it doesn't dry out. So this goes in the fridge and you're not gonna put anything on top of it. So it will slowly rise. Okay, and we're gonna put it in the fridge for two hours and then we're gonna come back and play with it some more. But for right now, stick it in the fridge and set a timer for two hours. You do need to wait the full two hours. So we'll come back as soon as it's ready. All right, so it has been about two hours in the fridge. You'll notice it did rise a little bit. That's a good thing. Now you wanna take the plastic off, save that plastic because you're going to need it to wrap it up again. But right now, just take your plastic off. Okay, remove it from the cutting board and place it on your rolling mat. Set your cutting board aside. You are gonna need it again. Now we're gonna roll this out again and we're gonna roll it out to basically the same. Okay, so you want it about 15 by 12-ish. And I say ish because specifics are not that important. You just want to make sure it is rolled out. Now the butter is in there and the butter is quite solid because it's been in the fridge. That's what you want. So you want to roll it out again about 15 by 12 ish. It's okay if it's not exactly that. Don't worry about it too much. Okay, now this dough is stiff because it's been in the fridge. Do not warm it up. Okay, you want to keep it quite cold. I'm just going to, there we go, roll a little more to this side. There we go. Remember, again, you don't have to be too finicky with it. Just get it rolled out into a nice rectangle. Okay, now that you've got that, you want another quarter cup of butter. Now I mentioned before you can use a plastic bag on your hand to handle your butter. So I'll just show you how to do that. Take a plastic bag, turn it inside out, put your hand in there. And then you just take the butter in your hand. You can warm it up a little by smushing it if you want. Okay, and kind of separate it a little bit. And this keeps your hand clean if you don't like using a knife. If you'd rather use a knife, go right ahead and use a knife. So my butter has been in the fridge, so it's still a little bit stiff, because I forgot to take it out. Because I needed a new block of butter this time around. So you just kind of smush your butter up. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. You're just smearing butter. So you can do it this way with a bag on your hand, or you can set the bag aside and just use your knife. You can do it however you like, but the bag trick is just kind of a neat trick if you haven't done it before because it does keep your hands clean and it lets you manipulate things a little bit. So sometimes I use that, sometimes I just don't. In this case, I'm just using a knife because I can. Okay, so you just kind of get your butter roughly distributed. It doesn't have to be perfect. But again, here, this way. So about two-thirds of your dough is going to get butter. The other two-thirds does not need butter. Okay, that's roughly good. You don't have to worry about it too much. No big deal. You just kind of leave it. Again, fold the unbuttered third over the butter. Give that a press. And then fold the buttered third onto that. Okay, just like so. There we go, give that a nice pat. Then you want to squeeze these ends so that the butter doesn't end up everywhere. Squeeze these ends, just like that, no problem. And pinch that seam closed, just like so. Okay, just like that, I don't need this. Again, plastic wrap, put that on there. Kind of wrap up your dough a little bit. Same thing on the other end. Wrap up that dough. Get your cutting board. Move it onto your cutting board. And then once again, you're gonna put this in the fridge for two hours. Okay, so you can see why this takes all day. Because 
we need to let this sit and solidify and then do that again. So this will literally take us all day. So again, stick this in the fridge for another two hours. Don't touch it and don't put anything on top of it. You do want it to rise a little bit. So we'll be back in about two hours. All right, so we're back again. It's been in the fridge for two hours, so our dough is ready for the next step, which looks very much like the last step. So we're going to take the plastic off. Don't throw your plastic out yet. You will need it one more time. There we go. Plastic and cutting board set to the side. You are going to need them. There we go again. We are again going to roll it. See, we've got so many layers. Excellent. Yeah. Is that something? That's a shadow. Never mind. <laughs> so we're just going to roll it again. And again, you're rolling it to be about 12 by 15. Okay, so not... It, again, you don't have to be too specific. It, I say 12 by 15. I actually mean just make it a nice big rectangle. Okay? And you can actually see, you probably can't see on camera, but you can see the shreds of butter through here, which is what you want, because you want to be seeing the butter. There's a bubble here to pop. You want to be seeing the butter. You want to be seeing the layers. And that's why we're not clumping this dough up. We are just rolling out our packet. Because if we clump the dough up, we ruin the layers. So don't clump it up, just roll it out. Nope, that's still just a shadow. Just checking. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I just keep checking. Let's make sure we don't have anything on the dough, because I like my dough nice and even. Okay, so that's fine. Like, it doesn't really matter. So again, we're going to take about a quarter cup of butter. I like butter. I'm just going to chop it into a few pieces. I don't like using super warm butter. I like using butter that is still slightly chilled because it just chills faster in the fridge. And we're just going to take this and spread it out again, only on two thirds of the dough. So each time you do this, you want to do about a quarter cup of butter at a time. So you end up using three quarters of a cup of butter, which sounds like a lot, and frankly it is, but these are croissants. We don't make them for our health. We make them because they're delicious. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. Just... There we are. Okay, put that over there. So now we are again, no, still a shadow. So now we're again going to fold this over. You fold the unbuttered third on top, grab your buttered third, flip that on top, give it a nice press, and now you're gonna wanna seal the edges, okay? Just like before, seal those edges up. It doesn't have to be perfect. It's okay if a little butter squeezes out here and there. It's just butter. It's not going to hurt you. There you go. So then again, plastic wrap. Get that on there. Wrap it up. No. Just checking. Wrap that up. Tuck it under. Same as we did before, we're just gonna wrap that up, place it on our cutting board, and pop it back in the fridge for two hours. Promise this is the final two hours. You see why I said this is gonna take at least eight hours? Probably more. So, pop that in the fridge, two hours. We'll come back and then we'll actually cut them into croissant shapes, I promise. All right, so we are back. We don't have to do any more folding. However, we still have to roll it out one more time. So remove it from the cutting board and take the plastic wrap off. There we go. Okay. 
Now we want to roll it out again. You probably won't need your plastic wrap unless you want to refrigerate them one more time. And either way, we're going to roll this out and we're going to roll again to about a 15 by 12. There we go. Okay, and I'm actually going to flip this over. There we go. Flip it over one time. There we go. It's okay to have some butter sticking up. That's really not that big a deal. So we're just going to roll it out to 12 by 15 ish again if you're not perfect don't worry about it if you get some butter on here just take it off and pat it on it's not a big deal okay just keep rolling and you're going to get to choose now if you want to bake them fairly quick then you're going to want to put them in a warm place to rise when we're done if you want to have them rise really slow you're going to be able to shape them into croissants and then put them in the fridge again. I'm going to bake them pretty quick because my kids are coming home from school and they're going to want them. And by pretty quick, I mean it's going to take another two hours of rising. So when I mean say pretty quick, I don't mean that quick. Okay, roll it again. Turn it over a couple of times as you're rolling just because it'll work out better for you. And don't cut into it while you're rolling. So don't kind of play with it too much. You don't want to disturb all that butter. Okay, don't be afraid to use your hands a little bit. We're gonna flip it again. And then we're just gonna stretch it, but don't pinch. Okay, so if you're gonna stretch it with your hands, that's fine, just don't pinch it. Okay, you can press, you can do lots of things with it, don't pinch. You don't want to rupture the dough right now. So that's 15 inches wide, and I just want to make sure we're down to 12, which we're not really. So we're just going to get him down this way. So you can roll it even bigger if you want. You'll just have more rolling to do. There we go. There. Hey, yeah, that's not bad. That's looking pretty good, actually. Yeah, popping is good. That means you're working out those air bubbles. We don't want too many air bubbles trapped. There we go. And you're probably going to end up with butter all over your rolling pin. Not a big deal. That's fine. Okay, so we're going to call that pretty good. As long as your rectangle is sort of rectangular, you're fine. So now what we want to do, it's over here. Get us a pizza cooker, a uh, pizza cooker, no, pizza cutter. Okay, now you can decide how big or small you want them. I'm going to do medium sized croissants, which means I'm gonna slice my dough into thirds both directions. Okay, if you want smaller ones, you could slice it into quarters, so slice it into fours instead of threes. If you want larger ones, you could just slice in half and then you'd get pretty big ones. But I'm gonna do roughly thirds, there we go. So about here and about here-ish. And then we're gonna go into thirds again. It's gonna be about here and then about here-ish. So you might are gonna be kind of medium in size. And now this is obviously not croissant shaped you need triangles. So to get our triangles, we're gonna cut each one in half. Diagonally, okay? So you can see our triangles taking shape, okay? And we're gonna do that in the same direction for all of them. So we're not gonna go this way because then we'd have little tiny triangles. We don't want little tiny triangles. There we go, and there we go. Okay, now for these guys, what you wanna do is take a triangle, any triangle, and then you're gonna want to kind of stretch it a little bit. So stretch your back out like this, 
and stretch and pull. So you want to be pulling. Okay, pull as you go. And then when you're putting them on either your cookie sheet or your cutting board, it doesn't really matter, but I'll get a cutting board out to kind of demonstrate a little bit. Okay, so we have our cutting board out. You can either just lay them straight or you can curve them. Okay, you can curve them if you like. I'm gonna lay them straight because we're gonna use these as sandwiches, but if you want to curve them, you can. So we're just gonna lay them straight. And then again here, you just decide which spot you wanna roll from, and I'm gonna go here. And you literally just pull and stretch. Pull, stretch. And you'll get better at it as time goes on, and then just lay them aside. So it doesn't really matter. So we're gonna pull here. You get to decide which corner you're starting from. Now you might end up with a piece like this. Let go. And this is not really very triangular shaped because they're in the corners. So what you can do here is you can just kind of pull it and reorient it a little bit. And then essentially make it a triangle. Okay, just do that. You could also roll it into a circle and do it that way. I'm not doing it that way because the problem with that is we already had a square, a rectangle. So what I don't want to do is have to muss with it too much, trying to get it into a circle. Remember, they don't have to be perfect. You're just going to eat them, and you're probably going to eat them as soon as they come out. So just keep doing that, and then what we're going to do, I'm not going to make you watch all of them, but then what we're going to do with them is we're going to, I'm putting them on a cookie sheet, but you can put them on your cutting board if you like. You can do it either way. If you're put them, putting them on the cutting board, you might want to cover them with plastic wrap again and let them rise in the fridge for at least four hours. We want to eat ours sooner than that. So what we're doing is I'm going to put them on a cookie sheet and let them rise in a warm location for about two hours. And then we'll come back and we'll bake them. But for right now, I'm not going to make you watch me roll all of them because it's boring. So what we're going to do is cut away and we will come back after these have risen. Remember, you either rise for four hours in the fridge or eight hours in the fridge if you want to leave them overnight, that's fine too, or two hours in a warm location. Your choice. So we'll be back. All right, so our croissants have risen. You will notice some of them popped. I don't care about that very much. So if you've put them aside in a warm place to rise, you will notice some of the butter has melted and leaked out. That's okay, because what we're gonna do is use our basting brush and just brush the tops. Butter makes it better. <laughs> so that's what we're gonna do. We're just going to brush the tops with butter, do a melted butter glaze on these. If you don't have that melted butter because you let them cold rise in the fridge, then you can use an egg white, a lightly beaten egg white to brush over your croissants. I prefer to use butter, so I always set mine aside somewhere warm to rise, at least for the last half hour, even if I've been cold rising them, because that way I can take butter and put it on top. That's what I like to do. Now you're going to preheat your oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit or thereabouts, depending on your oven, and you're going to bake these for 15 to 20 minutes. Bake them in the middle rack of your oven, too high and they'll burn, too low and they'll also burn. So middle rack of your oven and bake them for 15 to 20 minutes. Check them at 15, they may be done. These are quite light and airy. That is my oven preheating. It's done preheating and these are ready to go in. So check your croissants at the 15 minute uh, stage simply because these are very light and airy. So they actually cook pretty quick. You're not gonna have to cook them for 30 minutes or anything like that. So now we're just gonna stick these in the oven for 25 to 30 minutes at 375 degrees. And we'll take a look at them when they're done. And there we have it, some delicious croissants. So you can see them, they look really good. They taste even better. We will take a look at the layers. So you can see those layers and we'll just break one open. You can see how flaky they are on the inside. That's how they should look. That's why it's important to give them enough time to rise. 
So these took 15 minutes to cook. It was really easy. They're really fast because there's so much air and butter in them. They cook almost from the inside out. So check them at 15 minutes. Give them an extra five minutes if you need to. I hope you've enjoyed making croissants with us today. Remember, there are a lot of variations, a lot of different ways you can make croissants, and a lot of different recipes you can use. This is the one I've chosen to demonstrate today. Hope you had fun. We'll see you tomorrow.